This is the Bicycle Top Assembly video Part 3A. This replaces the original Part 3 for anyone taking this course in fall of 2015 or later. At this point we are ready to attach the chain to the bicycle. You'll recall that the first thing we did in this process was to insert the bicycle geometry into our assembly. This will provide some convenient sketches and geometry for locating our chain. Let's briefly look at the geometry file. You'll recall that what is in this file is a chain plane that locates the center line of the chain off of the center line of the bicycle. We will be aligning the chain to this plane. The other thing we are going to be looking at in this file is this sketch that shows the length of our chain stay. The chain stay is the distance from the center of the bottom bracket shell to the center of the rear axle, which is the same as the distance from the center of the chain ring to the center of the sprocket. We have to make sure that the chain assembly that we are going to be inserting into our bicycle assembly is going to have the same distance from the center of the sprocket to the center of the chain ring. So when we open up our chain assembly, we're going to have to do some adjustments probably to make sure that that happens. To find the length of the chain stay in your frame, just click on the frame layout sketch. You see in this case it's 41 centimeters long, which is the same as 410 millimeters. The chain stay on your particular bicycle may be longer or shorter than this. Now let's open up the chain assembly file. This is an assembly that was given to you in your components kit. In previous semesters, this was a multi-bodied, single part, and for fall of 2015 and later, this is an assembly file with an assembly of chain links using the chain pattern, which is now available in SOLIDWORKS 2015. Two links have been inserted into this assembly, an outer link and an inner link, and these are being patterned around a chain path sketch using the chain pattern. Let's edit this chain path sketch and take a look at it. What you see is that this is a loop, a closed loop, of the path of the chain going from the chain ring along this lower leg here to the sprocket and then the upper leg. You'll notice that there is a construction line here with a length of 410 millimeters. This is the chain stay length. You also notice that there's a diameter here that represents the diameter of the chain ring, and at this end, a diameter that represents the diameter of the sprocket. You will not be changing this diameter, but you may be changing this diameter for the sprocket depending on how many teeth your sprocket has. Right now, this diameter is set for the 15 tooth sprocket. Now, let's just say for the sake of argument that your particular bicycle has a chain stay length of 420 millimeters, so you want to edit this, change that to 420, and let's say you are using a 16 tooth sprocket instead of 15, then you need to find out what is the appropriate diameter here at the end of the chain. To do this, we need to open up our sprocket file. Now you will recall when you did the tutorial for the sprocket, there was a layout sketch that controlled the diameter of the teeth and the shape of the teeth. And I'll just highlight that here. And what we have in that sketch is something called the pitch circle, which is the center line of the teeth, and this is the center line that the links of the chain will be going around. This is the diameter that we want to be using in our chain path sketch. Right now this is set for a configuration of 15 teeth, Let's pretend we are going to use a 16 tooth configuration. We'll click on that. We'll go back to our feature tree. Click on our sketch here and we see that the new pitch circle is 65.1 millimeters. So we're going to use that number back in our chain sketch. Back in our chain path sketch, we will update this dimension here, which has a lot of explanation attached to it. This will be 65.1. See that got a little bit bigger. We will finish the path sketch and we will roll forward our patterns for the links. And when we do so, we see that there is a break in the links here. That's because we've made the total path longer but have not changed the number of links in the chain. We'll start by editing the outer link pattern. 
and we see here that each link is spaced at a spacing of a little more than 12.85 millimeters. Now it turns out that the correct spacing of real chain links is 12.7 millimeters, which is the same as one half inch. So what has happened here is this odd dimension was designed to perfectly space all the links around the distance we have at the end here and be as close to 12.7 as possible. If we don't do that, what would have happened was there would have been an unusual gap between the beginning and end of the chain, and we don't want to see the last link have a much bigger space than all the other links. So we're actually going to cheat a little bit and slightly tweak the spacing to get everything evenly spaced out. So the first thing I'm going to do is set this back to 12.7 millimeters, and then I'm going to tell it to fill the path. What it's going to do is put in as many links as it can at 12.7 millimeters and then any leftover that isn't quite enough to fill in another chain link will just be left empty. So I'll click on fill path. And we see that it can actually get 50 links in now instead of 49. Then what I do is I uncheck fill path. We know that we can get 50 links in at a spacing of 12.7. What we now want to do is equally space it out so that that last gap between the first and last link will be the same as all the other links. So when I click on equal spacing, you see it's adjusted the spacing a little bit. Now in real life, the chain will always have exactly 12.7 millimeters between links. And the chain will always have a little bit of slack and you have the ability to shift the wheel back and forth a little bit to get the chain to fit tightly. I'm being lazy and I don't want to mess with all that. So now finishing the pattern, we see there's still a gap that's probably due to the interlink pattern, so I'll just quickly edit that. And I'll go down here, reset the spacing to 12.7 as our starting spacing. I'll click fill pattern, and of course it goes to 50 again. And then I'll uncheck fill pattern and say equal spacing, and this is the same spacing as the outer link. Now all the gaps are closed and all the chain links appear to be spaced evenly. And if we zoom in very closely and go to our wireframe, we can see here that there's a subtle discrepancy between the pin on the inner link and the roller on the outer link. But this is very small and unnoticeable. That's because we're spreading the error in lengths across about 100 different lengths total. I still like this method better than what I had in my previous video, which involved living with a little bit of a gap at the ends of the chain or having to have the chain links overlapping between the end and the beginning of the chain, which didn't look as good. Now let's go back to our bicycle assembly. The first thing I want to do is insert the chain assembly into my bicycle assembly. So I'll just go to Insert Components. And we see in the box here, we should have the chain assembly because I already had it open in SolidWorks. I'm just going to drag it into this general vicinity here. Now the center line of the chain links is on the front plane of the chain assembly. So I can't simply mate the front plane of the chain assembly to the front plane of the bicycle assembly because then the chain won't be properly offset from the front plane and engage with the sprocket and the chain ring. So going down to the bottom of my feature tree, I'm going to actually expand the tree for the chain assembly. What I want to do is hold down my control key and click on the front plane of the chain assembly, scroll back to the top of my feature tree, expand the bike geometry file, and click on the chain plane that's included in that bike geometry file. And then finally say mate. Let's just finish the mates for a moment. And I will take a look at this from the front view. If I highlight this chain plane in the geometry file, I see that it's going right down the center of the chain links of the chain assembly that I just inserted. I still have the ability to move this around, as you see here. So the first thing I want to do is mate an axis that is contained in this chain assembly at the chain ring with the center of the bottom bracket shell. 
I also have an axis in the chain assembly that's at the center of the sprocket, and I want to align that with the center of the sprocket on the wheel, which is the same as the center of the axle. But if I turn on all of my axes, I see that every part that was in this assembly is going to turn on its axis, which is very distracting and difficult to look at. So I'm going to turn that back off, and I'm instead going to be picking the axes in this chain assembly from the feature tree. So scrolling back down to the bottom of my feature tree, I see in the expanded chain assembly the chain ring axis, which you see highlighting here, and the sprocket axis, which you see highlighting here. I'm going to start by mating the chain ring axis to the center of the bottom bracket shell. It turns out that the center of the bottom bracket shell is actually on the origin, so I can actually mate to that. So holding down my control key, I will click on the chain ring axis, scroll to the top, click on the origin, mate, and I'll finish these mates here, and that brought that up to the origin so that this is concentric with the origin, and I should have one degree of freedom left still where I can swing the chain up and down. So the last thing I want to do is mate this sprocket axis with the intersection of the chain stay, I'm sorry, the seat stay and the chain stay right where they meet because that's where the center of the axle is and also the center of the sprocket. These are the sketches in the geometry file. So holding my control key down one last time, I've already selected the sprocket axis. And I will click on this point right here in the geometry file and click on mate. And you see that swings it up into position. Now this is important. In order to be able to align both the chain ring and the sprocket axis, the distance for the chain stay in the chain assembly has to exactly match the distance of the chain stay in the geometry file down to the last decimal place. It can't even be off a tiny bit or SOLIDWORKS will not allow that last mate to occur. Now even if you make sure that all these things are exactly the same, occasionally SOLIDWORKS will still be persnickety about allowing that last mate. If that should happen, one last recourse you have would be to go back to the chain assembly and make a plane that's perpendicular to the front plane and passes through this line in the chain path sketch. Then what you can do is go back to your assembly for the bicycle and make that new plane to this line in the geometry file and this is the line that represents the chain stay. Let's turn off all of our sketches and just take a close up here. And if you were to do a rendering of this view, all you have to do is make sure that the wheel lines up so that the sprockets and the rollers seem to line up. And even though the spacing is off a little bit because of the tweaking we did, no one's going to notice that when you make your render. You can do the same on the front chain ring. And that completes this video.